Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink and I have this card for you guys using the Pretty Pink Posh Rainy Days stamp set. I actually had the idea for this card in the back of my mind now for a few weeks. I'd come across a picture online of, um, it was like a grouping of black umbrellas with a rainbow umbrella peeking out and I don't have a link to the source image that inspired this because when I went to look again online, one, couldn't find it. Two, there's kind of a million of them. So I have no idea who the original source of like a piece of art like that would be. But anyway, I had this idea floating in the back of my head to create a card with all these black umbrellas and then have one popping out that was rainbow. So that's why I pulled out this um, rainy day set from Pretty Pink Posh because there's this perfect little umbrella image that didn't have the handle attached, which would make my life easier. And I stamped it three times onto some post-it masking tape. You could just use um, a regular like sticky note, whatever. I just like these because they have the temporary adhesive like all over. And so I'd stamped it the three times, cut them out three times with scissors. And then I've got a piece of, this is Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. And I have it cut slightly larger than A2. I think it's about four and a half by five and three quarters, something like that because I already planned on die cutting this um, before I'd be completely finished. So I wanted to give myself a little bit of room with this. So all I'm doing is I started from the bottom and stamping the umbrella and then masking off um, the next one and sometimes having to mask multiples. That's why I had the three masks and just going to town. I ended up making a huge mess doing this because I do not pre-plan my cards. They're usually just a vague idea in the back of my head and um, when it comes time to actually have time to stamp and everything else, I'm just winging it. Like I sit down in between, you know, meals and activities with the kids and all that kind of stuff. Or more often than not, they're all in here with me just being crazy. So I made a mess. I was getting ink everywhere because um, if you've never worked with post-it, um, the tape before, the inks, usually most stamping inks don't dry very quickly on it. So the ink was kind of smearing, getting my fingers. I was smearing it on the background there. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I could. But I didn't worry about that because, like I'd said, I was planning on coloring these basically black. So I was like, meh, I'm just going to go with it. So this did take quite a bit of time. And once I got about three quarters of the way done, I couldn't keep reusing these masks. They've been stamped on so many times the ink was starting to seep through. So I re-stamped them quickly three more times onto another piece of the post-it tape and created three new masks. Plus I was just using a scrap of post-it tape as well just to kind of mask off all of these areas. So I've got this whole collection of um, umbrellas. So I stamped everything with Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. Uh, my plan again was to color everything with Copics. I did think about doing this with watercolor because I was like, ooh, watercolor would probably be really fast <laughs> to do since I want to do all, all but one um, in one color, like basically do them, you know, gray slash black. But then I, as I'm working on this, I was like, mm, you know, I think I'm going to stick with the Copics because I had some other plans that wouldn't work as well if I did watercolor because Copics are... Um, they don't react with water, anything like that, which you'll see why that matters in a little bit. But once I had everything stamped, I took a pencil and marked the one umbrella that I don't want black with um, an X so that I don't get distracted and color over it. And then when I started coloring, I chose three dark gray Copic markers. So I used um, C6, C8, and C10. I will have a picture of all the Copics I used like listed on my blog. And I started out doing this and I was going to color each umbrella individually. And as soon as I started doing that, I was like, this is going to take me forever and I ain't got time for this. So I flipped my marker around and used the chisel end and just went to town, coated the entire background, which took a couple of minutes, not very long at all. And it's a good thing I had marked that one umbrella with my little pencil X so that I knew to avoid it <laughs> and just colored around and just laid down a quick layer. It's not perfect. It's a little streaky. It doesn't matter. In the end, you're not going to be able to tell. But I just wanted my quick base layer down and then I start going in with the C8 and um, just I just went along the lines like a person could really create like a beautiful piece of art if they wanted to like really spend the time doing the shading perfectly all that kind of stuff. Um, I, again I just I don't have time for that and it's just a card so I was like you know what, I'm just gonna make it look as decent as I can and obviously right now it looks like crap. <laughs> 
<laughs> but that's the beauty of Copics, you know? The When you start adding in so many other colors before you really start blending things, it's just like, oh my goodness. But I knew to just kind of keep going. So I did that with the C8 and then I went in with my C10 and just added a little bit more there. And the one thing I did avoid was I avoided the areas where there technically wasn't an umbrella. That in the end, that'll just give it a little bit of definition. So there'll be those little lighter gray areas here and there. But I didn't get super technical, super fancy, nothing. I just wanted to get um, these base colors down. And then once I have all of that down, I go back over it with um, my C6. And this is where it starts blending the colors together a bit more and it just makes it look so much nicer. So kind of some mindless color. And this is where I was really starting to think about, okay, now what am I gonna do to like make this an actual card? So I've super sped up this coloring process. I did it in more than one sitting, even though it's simple coloring, it still took a fair bit um, of time. I think altogether a good 20 minutes, half an hour, something like that, um, which for me is quite a lot. But yeah, I just kind of did it in between everything else. And you can see it really saturated. And that's another reason why I chose the 80 pound because um, I find it's a little easier to color that way. The color moves a little bit more. It's not as thick as the 110 pound Nina Solar White that I like to use. So it just makes coloring a little bit faster. It's kind of personal preference, but for this, it worked really well to use the 80 pound. So once I was done the background, um, I'm gonna color in the main focus, which is this rainbow umbrella. And I was just in my head, I was like planning out like how far do I go with each color so that it's kind of even so that, you know, I don't get to the end of the umbrella and it's like, oh crap, I still have to do blue and purple. So I kind of planned it out so that I knew how much space to create and I just started with red. And um, I used just two colors for each, or two shades of each color. So I used two reds, two oranges, two yellows, two greens, two blues, two purples. And I started with the lighter of each color and that's what I would blend in the other one. And I would go back and forth between, like when I applied the yellow, I went back and added a bit of the orange again so that the orange was still wet again and then it would blend in the yellow. And same with the green. So I'd apply the green and then I'd go back with a little bit of the yellow just so they would kind of blend and I wouldn't have really harsh lines. So that's another nice thing with Copics is they do blend together quite well, even, you know, not um, similar colors. So it just takes a bit of practice when it comes to blending. And that's also where lighter weight cardstocks work a little bit better. So the ink isn't soaking in as much. Um, yeah, anywho, so got it all colored. And then as I was looking at it, I couldn't resist. I was like, this would look even better if it was shimmery. <laughs> so I went over it with my um, Spe Spectrum Noir Clear Sparkle Pen and gave that a really good coat of shimmer. So it's all sparkly, super, super fun. And this is where I was like, this is why I chose to go with the Copics because as I was kind of thinking about this card, I wanted to add raindrops to this. And I was like, if I had done watercolor for this, there's a good chance it could have been quite the mess. But I wanted to stamp and emboss um, raindrops over this. So with Copics, it just made it easier because with Copics, they dry really fast. Um, I did test out first. I coated everything with my anti-static powder tool first. And then I poured the embossing powder over it just to make sure it wasn't going to cling to any areas. And it didn't. And then I masked off that rainbow umbrella just because I didn't want to stamp any of the water droplets over that. And um, so yeah, coated everything with my anti-static powder tool. And then I'm inking up the water raindrop. There's two stamps in that set. There's a large stamp and a smaller one with only like three drops. So I'm inking up the large one with Simon Says Stamp Clear Embossing Ink. And just doing um, one part at a time so I can see where I've placed the raindrops here. And I just stamped that entire background with that. And then I'm coating it all with just clear embossing powder. So coating it all, tapping off the excess. And I did get a couple spots where I, my fingerprints must have, where my fingers must have touched the cardstock. But I just quickly wiped that off with a little brush before I go to um, melt that with my heat tool. And then I remove the mask before I heat everything. And I just get out my heat tool, let it heat up for a few seconds, and then make sure to... Um, fully melt all of these raindrops so that they will be clear and glossy and just heating up letting the heat tool heat up for a few seconds before I start just minimizes any warping of the cardstock so then I've got this really fun um, background here with um, dark umbrellas and raindrops and then this is the die I was thinking of before I started that's why I use that larger piece of cardstock. It is the largest die from My Favorite Things Blueprints 25 set and it die cuts an A2 size um, rectangle. So four and a quarter by five and a half with a little stitching edge all the way around. So I die cut that and then I stamped a sentiment from that same rainy day stamp set just onto a piece of vellum. 
um, with the same clear embossing ink and then this time I used detail white embossing powder and I wrapped it around the card front and taped that into place with some scotch tape. And then to add to the dimension of the card, I've got some pretty pink posh clear droplets. I have the small and the large. And I just thought those would be kind of perfect to go with this whole like raindrop sort of a theme. And this time I adhered them with glossy accents. Now I adhere sequins, clear droplets, anything. I always use multi-medium matte or multi-matte medium, however you say it, from Ranger. But I've had a lot of people saying that the glossy accents just work better with these clear droplets because um, it dries, you know, with that glossy finish and they just look better. So I honestly don't usually see much of a difference, but I thought with this, just because of like all the dark coloring underneath and the raindrops and the eye, like what I was going for, I'd rather not um, mess with it. So I just used the glossy accents and it worked fine. And then since I had the glossy accents out, I was looking at it and I was like, mm, you know, that, that rainbow umbrella would look really pretty with a good thick layer of glossy accents on it. So I actually did it and normally I avoid this sort of thing. I can't remember if I said it in a video or maybe it was a live stream lately, but I've been using glossy accents more and more lately because I'm getting a lot better at setting things aside and actually letting them dry without touching them because I'm really bad for that. So I set that aside to dry. And then for my card base, I'm using the Nina 110 pound cardstock this time that was cut to four and a quarter by um, 11 and scored at five and a half with my Teflon bone folder. So just making sure that I had cut that cardstock properly so that that die cut um, card front will completely cover the entire card. And that was fine. And then I had, um, while it was drying, I stamped and colored another umbrella in the exact same color scheme as I did in the front. So I didn't do that on video. And then I trimmed it out because I wanted to use that on the inside of the card. And then I grabbed the little handle um, stamps from the set and figure out how I was going to place this on the inside of the card. So kind of laid it out how I wanted it and stamped those with the same um, intense black ink from Simon's Stamp and then stamped the top of the umbrella as well because there's that tiny little piece on the top there. So I wanted that to show up because I just trimmed that off when um, I cut out that little rainbow piece that I colored. So I colored in the handle with, I think it was like the C10 marker and then I'm going to adhere that umbrella top into place with some Tombow Mono Multi and that finished off the inside of the card. I decided not to stamp a sentiment or anything, just have the rainbow umbrella. And then to adhere the card front, I used the Tombow Mono Multi again because it gives me a little bit of time to um, move it around a little bit. So I got it perfectly lined up and straight on the card and that finished it off. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post where I will have um, links to all the supplies used as well as pictures of the card that I show and um, the picture of all the Copic markers I use to create this card. So if you're interested in any of that, check out the links below the video. And thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs up in my videos and all the comments. I read all the comments I get and I try to respond to as many as possible and I really appreciate it. And yeah, I will see you guys next time. Bye.